The Branson area has a long history of hauntings and sightings, so I want to bring you 13 Branson ghost stories that will keep you up at night. This is Chris with Branson's Best Shows. Now, the Branson train station has basically been in the same location since it was built over a hundred years ago. Hauntings are not uncommon around the area with so many souls coming in and out of the town. But one particular spirit is still reportedly seen in the twilight hours, the ghost of Jake Flegel. Jake was part of the infamous Flegel gang who for a number of years was committing crimes and robberies all over the country. He was ultimately tracked down due to a single fingerprint left in a car of a doctor he murdered. The fingerprint was left in blood on a rolled down window. This was supposedly the first time in history a fingerprint was used to convict somebody. The FBI was on high alert and anxious to find Jake. Up until October 14, 1930, Jake remained at large until an anonymous tip placed him in Branson, Missouri, where he was gunned down at the railroad depot after a gunfight with the authorities. Though he was shot and mortally wounded in Branson, the officers failed to make it to the hospital in nearby Springfield before Jake died 24 hours later. So Jake still haunts the site to this day, and if you catch Branson's Scenic Railroad right at twilight, you might get a glimpse of Jake's ghost in an empty train car. Now, just down the street from the train depot is the oldest commercial building left standing in Branson, and a source of our next ghostly presence. Long ago before the Plum Bazaar Beat Shop, the building was known as Sullinger Saloon. It served as a bar and brothel that was frequented by the railroad workers. The story goes that a fellow who was visiting the working gals was a bit drunk, dozed off, and awoke to find a woman going through his pockets for some extra cash. In a fit of anger, he jumped up and slit her throat. Upset and regretful of what he did, he ran off and was missing for several days before he was found dead with a gunshot wound in the chest. Many have reported over the years seeing a figure of a sorrowful mountain man on the east side of the building facing the railroad tracks, logging to get back on the train to leave what he did far behind, and the spirit of the working gal he killed peering down at him from the windows of the second floor. Now, not all of our ghosts live such criminal lives. The Branton Town Company built what is now known as the Branton Hotel in 1903, nine years before Branton was officially incorporated. Harold Bell Wright even stayed at the hotel often while writing his famous novel, Shepherd of the Hills. Guests and visitors have often stated seeing Harold Bell Wright working, riding late into the night by candlelight in one of the rooms in the back of the hotel often spotted from the outside and often late in the evening. Now, music has run deep in these woods for ages, and that's what attracts many a young country singer to this area. In 1972, country singer Jim Nash poured his heart and soul into building Jim Nash's Country Style Opry, which would later become the renowned Americana Theater. He dreamt of gracing the stage to share his music with the world. However, just before his scheduled debut performance, tragedy struck. To this day, employees of the Americana Theater claim to witness a haunting apparition, a man in a cowboy hat patiently waiting beside the stage for a performance that never happened. Some say they could hear a faint strum of a guitar or catch a glimpse of him out of the corner of their eye, yearning for his chance to shine. Now, something that isn't scary is half price tickets, which you can get at the Americana Theater using our promo code BBS. That's right, you can catch C.J. Newsom's classic country and comedy, Elvis' Story of a King, America's Top Country Hits, and Awesome 80s, as well as many, many more for half price using the promo code BBS on our website, AmericanaTheaterBranson.com, or calling our box office. Now, the Americana Theater isn't the only theater that has a ghostly presence. Established in 1936, the Owens Theater, owned by Jim Owen, has had supernatural activity. Jim Owen held a great connection to Hollywood and was also well known in the area for his float trips and fishing excursions. Now at least two entities have been known to frequent the theater. The spirit of Jim Owens himself has been experienced in and around the theater, mainly just hanging around, perhaps making sure things are running smoothly. Also, the spirit of socialite Rosie O'Neill, yeah, that's the creator of the Cupid doll, that frequented the theater when it was a movie house in the early days has been reported on a number of occasions. 
In her days with living, she was a reckless flirt. So in the present, men have reported someone or something giving them a pinch on the backside. And if you're not too scared, it would help me out if you hit the like and subscribe button. Now, for the longest time in Branson, if you needed a hospital, you had to make it all the way to Springfield, or you were a goner, just like poor old Jake Flegel in 1930. Well, in 1950, the Skaggs family helped build a state-of-the-art hospital right here in Branson. Yet, there is a haunting tale that lingers. The story centers around a dedicated nurse named Emily, who had worked at Skaggs Hospital from the time it was built. She was known for her unwavering commitment to her patients, especially the children in the pediatric ward. Tragically, Emily's own life was cut short when she succumbed to a sudden unknown illness, leaving her beloved patients heartbroken. Since her passing, the nurses and staff members would report strange occurrences in the hospital. Patients in the pediatric ward sometimes claimed to have seen a kindly ghost nurse with a warm smile and a gentle touch, attending to their needs. Even though the building now is offices, the ghostly presence of Nurse Emily remains comforting at the hospital. Now, not all these stories are so compassionate. Just west of Branson in rural Taney County, Missouri, is a huge sandstone outcropping known as Murder Rocks. Alf Bolin, a notorious Civil War bushwhacker, utilized the rocky terrain to his advantage. Murder rocks were strategically located along the 19th century trail connecting Harrison, Arkansas and Springfield, Missouri. A bustling route for freight wagons, livestock and stagecoaches. Alf Bolin terrorized the local population, plundering freight wagons, stealing livestock and even committing the murder of over 20 people without remorse. His cruelty knew no bounds, even though he was barely out of his teens when the war began. Captured Confederate soldier Rufus Richards, residing in a farmhouse near Murder Rocks with his wife, agreed to help the Union capture Alf Bolin in exchange for Rufus's life. Bolin frequented the farmhouse for meals. To set a trap for Bolin, the Union enlisted the aid of a 22-year-old Iowa recruit named Zachariah Thomas. Disguised as a sick Confederate soldier, Thomas hid upstairs at the Richards' home. On February 2, 1863, Bolin visited the Richards' farmhouse, where he heard a noise upstairs. Thomas pretended to descend the staircase in pain, and Mrs. Richards explained that he needed shelter due to his illness. As they sat down for dinner, Bolin gradually relaxed. While Bolin leaned over the fireplace to light his pipe, Thomas struck him <clears throat> over the head with a plow coulter and killed him. His body was retrieved and his head was taken as proof of his death, becoming a gruesome relic in the Ozarks courthouse. Though Bolin met his demise, the legend endured, and for over a century, residents and passerbys have claimed to see his ghost wandering in the area, sometimes with his head detached from his body, looking for his hidden treasure. Now, this is not the only ghost from the Civil War era. The Shepherd of the Hills outdoor theater venue is rumored to be haunted by the ghost of a Confederate soldier. Where the Inspiration Tower now sits was once a mountain lookout for the Confederacy in the Civil War. Witnesses since 1964 have seen a ghostly soldier running from the actors during the night performances, often during the burning of the cabin, or else when the horses and their riders come to the main stage. So keep your eyes peeled the next time you catch the play, and let me know in the comments below if you've seen The Shepherd of the Hills and got a glimpse of this ghost. Just a short distance past Shepherd of the Hills, down Old 76, you'll stumble upon the remains of what was once a bustling town of Garber, Missouri. Now all that remains is a weathered, abandoned post office left to decay with a passage of time. Today, the historical site is inaccessible to the public, but hasn't escaped the tales of the eerie and the unexplained. Among the eerie stories that circulate, one involves postmistress Ada Codfelder. When she ran the general store, a mail clerk was caught stealing. Ada promptly alerted the authorities. Before they could arrive, the thief set the store ablaze, tragically claiming Ada's life. Visitors have reported strange phenomenon like unexplained cold spots and sudden gusts of wind on an otherwise tranquil day. Another ghostly woman can be found out at Big Cedar Lodge at the Warman House. The Warman House is said to be haunted by the spirit 
of Harry Warman's much younger wife, Dorothy. She was roughly half his age. Their relationship seemed rather scandalous at the time. It was said that she ran off with a member of the staff to Mexico and died there under odd circumstances. Her body was returned to Missouri for burial. The actual truth of her demise is difficult to find, but often staff and guests report seeing a mysterious young woman roaming the grounds late at night. She's often seen wearing a long white dress and appears sad. Some say she shows up in photos taken by guests at the resort, often as a shadow in the background. Another tale comes from what is now known as the God and Country Theater, but once was Table Rock Twin Cinema, which opened in the fall of 1975. I spoke with the current owner, Jerry Presley, and he told me that he spent many a night in the theater for the first four years he owned it, and there was not one night that went by that he didn't hear or see things he couldn't explain. And I did hear a story about a former projectionist named Samuel, who had worked at the theater in his early days. Samuel was known for his love of classic films. Tragically, he met his end under mysterious circumstances within the theater's projection booth. Some say it was an accident, while others believe there was something more sinister at play. As the years passed, employees began to experience unexplained phenomenon. Projection equipment would start on its own and films would play without anyone touching the controls. Lights would flicker during late night shifts and strange shadows danced across the screen. So Jerry could have well been hearing old Samuel this entire time. Now just past the end of the 76 strip, headed towards Silver Dollar City, you might just see a ghostly hitchhiker because of the tragedy that happened on December 9th, 1999. A plane owned by the College of the Ozarks crashed into Dewey Bald Mountain, which sits in the middle of the Ruth and Paul Hennings Conservation Park. The crash took the lives of six souls. The school owned the plane, which was returning from St. Louis when it went down just after 5 p.m. Debris was scattered over 100 yards. Many reports have spotted ghostly apparitions hitchhiking near the mountain, asking for rides to the airport, or when will the plane land? Now, not all the ghosts in Branson are local. The Titanic has seemed to bring us some international specters. Almost everyone knows the tragedy that befell the Titanic that fateful night and has heard the great number of lives lost. Now, even though the Titanic Museum was built in 2006, the artifacts that come in and out of the museum are from that fateful trip. And rumor has it that many spirits travel along with the few possessions that they have left. It has been heard that several crew members over the years have found fingerprints and handprints on the inside of the glass display cases. Other reports state wet footprints of various sizes can be found where no one has been. Late at night, Apparitions have been sighted in formal wear strolling the corridors. Now to stop being scared, watch these other videos about Branson and make sure to like and subscribe.